On today's Apple Daily, new betas released for iOS, macOS, iPads, watches, all that kind of stuff. iPhone 11 and 12s showing wear on aluminium parts. Dual booting on Apple Silicon is hard. And a big shout out for a brand that I kind of like. For the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. I'm iCave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple leaks, news and rumors every weekday at 12.30 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. We've got no new members for the notification squad today. Vinay Spider wants to renew his vows so you get a little shout out. But if you want to join the notification squad, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell and let me know down in the comments with hashtag notification squad so that you get a shout out in the next video. Also yesterday we did our first iCave Answers standalone video. So we've done one like way back in the past, but the first of the like regular ones that we're gonna do. Um, and it went really well, like loads of you guys watched it. So um, if you've got more questions, smash them down in the comments section with hashtag iCave answers and I will make sure that I get around to them. What we will probably do is have a bit more of a pool of questions uh, and get to them as soon as we can so that the, the shows are like, so that the shows are like a normal kind of length so that we're not doing ridiculously long shows and then like a two question show. Um, so that's how it's going to work. So make sure you smash them down there. We're probably not going to do a show on them today, uh, but I will be filming tonight ready for tomorrow because this afternoon we will probably have some news about the Apple events. But all of that being said, we've gone on far too long at the beginning of this video, but let's get into the news. So we have developer public betas for iOS 14.5 and macOS 11.3 that have all come out yesterday, plus watchOS 7.4. Um, this is basically updates to the ones that we've had already, and it is a week ahead of when we expect the event to be. So it makes sense that this might well be a golden master or like a release candidate. So there's no big changes in this beta compared to the previous betas that we've had in the, the past few weeks. Um, but it does include, as usual, the stuff like face ID with masks. Uh, it includes app tracking transparency mode. It includes a bunch of other stuff like that. Obviously the support for air tags is there. The items tab is there in the find my section. So it's still all looking very positive for us getting air tags next week. So if you're not on the public beta program, like if it's your main device, I don't recommend grabbing the betas. If you've got an older iPhone, like one from last year or the year before that you kind of just have sitting in a drawer, pop it on there. It's quite fun to play around with these betas. Um, Again, with Macs, I don't actually run the betas on my main system because obviously I need this to kind of work so that I can edit stuff. I won't put it on the iMac because the iMac does not run Big Sur. Again, with the Macs, if you've got a system that is not your main production system, the one that you have to use for work, it's a great fun thing to do. Uh, probably stick to the public betas, the developer ones. A, you have to have an account, which you have to pay for, uh, and it tends to be a lot more buggy than the public releases, but it's a very interesting thing to do. On the subject of next week's event, we are expecting to get our invites today. So leave me down in the comments section what you think the tagline will be, assuming that it's not come out by the time this video does. In the past we've had, uh, last year, one more thing, time flies and high speed. So go for your lives. iPhone 11 and 12 models showing wear on aluminium colors and Apple don't want to repair them. So this seems to be very much a not story to me. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to tackle this, but uh, yeah, iPhone 11 and 12 models on the aluminium are showing some wear on the edges, which is surely very much expected. That's exactly how aluminium works. So when you color aluminium, uh, when you do an anodizing process, you basically do an anodizing with it in some dye um, so that uh, it picks up the color. And basically anodizing is oxidizing the outside layer of the aluminium at a very basic level. Um, but when you do that, it kind of forms a protective layer across the aluminium. And if you've got it in dye at the time, then some of that dye gets absorbed into it and becomes part of the aluminium. But of course, this protective layer is only the outside of the aluminium. Aluminium itself is kind of a silvery color. That's the color of, my, uh, that's the color of most Macs. And when you col color the outside of aluminium, it's only the outside of the aluminium that's colored. So when you have it in your pocket and it's rubbing against stuff, that outside layer is gonna be kind of eroded away and that is normal. Um, but for some reason, this is a news story that's going around on different Apple news sites that it's rubbing off. It's not rubbing off, the outside of the aluminium is being eroded, being rubbed away by your clothing, 
by all that sort of stuff it's not particularly hard metal aluminium that's why we have stainless steel on the pro ones because that's a harder stronger metal aluminium is quite a soft metal um, and way going way back to the iphone 5 series when that first came out with aluminium bezels i immediately looked at it and went well i'm not getting the black one because the anodizing is going to wear off so to give you a little bit of context i used to be very much into like higher level paintball and most of the paintball markers the thing you shoot with the the paintball gun they tend to be made of aluminium and they're anodized and you would see all of these paintball markers that were out there that people had been using for a, a year or so and all of the raised surfaces would be silver and the rest of it would be the normal color and that is because that's what aluminium does that's just what aluminium does this is the definition of wear and tear this is exactly what is covered by the phrase does not include normal wear and tear so if it starts to lose color on the edges that's called wear and tear sorry guys it's going to go a bit silvery on the edges but i think that's going to look pretty cool Got it. yes tad okay come on then come on then which which wrist that one lie your wrist down that's it mate thank you there you go, Val. You close my door for me. Ted. Don't hold your breath for dual booting Apple Silicon. Okay, so I think this is something that we knew was going to happen. I don't think anyone was expecting Bootcamp to be coming to Apple Silicon anytime soon, but booting to other operating systems is way harder than making software for Apple Silicon, according to researchers who have found that basically nothing about Apple's architecture in the new Macs is based on existing standards. Rather, it's an evolution of the embedded systems that have been made over the years for iPhones and iPads. I mean, wow, what a revelation that Apple Silicon is closely related to iPhones and iPads. Basically, Apple has had no interest whatsoever in putting anything in there to make it easy to boot into Windows or Linux or, I don't know, can you still do like pure units? Can you do Sun systems? I don't know what people want to boot these things into, but you can't do it. It's, uh, it's very, very difficult. All of the stuff that is at the kind of base level, the, um, the device tree, I think it's called, is purely in binary. There's no kind of high level code in there that you can see. There is, uh, it, it's just completely arbitrary for Apple Silicon. It's not designed to boot into anything else. And that's okay. I've made a whole video on why Apple Silicon is not computers, like in the traditional way that everyone thinks of computers being, okay? We need to completely forget the idea, stop comparing it to Windows in anything other than the speed that it can do things. It is not something where you are going to be able to replace RAM, it is not going to be something where you are going to be able to replace hard drives in almost every case, apart from maybe the Mac Pros, but even at that point, I think we're going to have basically a core system that is built, and then you're going to be able to add on internal storage but it's going to act basically as if it's external storage there might be some fancy software stuff that hides a bit of that but that's basically what you're going to be doing you've got a box that will hold your external hard drives so even down to the boot picker screen that's kind of replaced the choose a boot disk that you had on the intel models where you hold option during boot uh, is basically a full-on full screen mac os app rather than part of the bootloader itself so this article goes into quite a lot of detail. This is over on Apple Insider, uh, but the Cliff Notes version is do not expect to be able to dual boot to other operating systems anytime soon, possibly ever on Apple Silicon. That's not what it's for. That's not what Apple has designed it for. They've designed it to be very much its own system. When you compare it to the Macs that we had with Intel, they were built from commodity off the shelf computer parts that basically any OEM could buy. So you were buying a computer that ran Mac OS. Now you are buying a Mac, and a Mac is different from a computer that can run macOS. The Mac, the Apple Silicon Mac, is built specifically for macOS. It is built specifically to run macOS software. That's why it has hardware pieces within that SoC, within the Apple Silicon uh, M1 chip, that are specific purely to the way that macOS runs. It's not just an ARM chip that is running macOS, it is built specifically for macOS. 
And it's important to remember as well that although we are a tech channel and we are talking to a lot of people who love tinkering, like I run boot camp on my uh, old iMac, the vast, vast, vast majority, probably 95% of people who buy a Mac never want to run anything other than Mac OS. They don't want to run Windows. They don't want to run Linux. They don't want to run even virtualized stuff. That's where we will be able to run other operating systems. It's going to be in Parallels. It's going to be in VMware. It's going to be in things like that. But the vast majority of people who buy a Mac won't do any of that anyway. Like, even creators, in most cases, are going to be buying their Mac. They're going to be running Final Cut on it. They're going to run Adobe Premiere. They're going to run Photoshop, Lightroom. They're going to run software that's written for the Mac, specifically. Now, I know there are IT techs out there who need to be able to run Windows or different versions of Windows or Linux or server software. And those people are not who the Macs are built for. I'm sorry. It's just not what they're for. The best option, I do think, for anyone that needs to have access to Windows is to have a Windows machine and be able to remote into it using your Mac. Because that is absolutely fine. Like You're not going to lose any performance that way. And if you want to work on a Mac, that's what you're going to have to do. Like VMs will work and it will be okay. You will be able to virtualize Windows. Um, you might not be able to do it legitimately. You might not be able to do it in a licensed way. And that is an issue at the moment. And that is something that comes down to Apple and Microsoft to talk nicely to each other and get access to that Windows for ARM. Mac users can run it. The lucky thing we have is that the M1 is so powerful that actually virtualizing other operating systems within it shouldn't be a problem. If you need Windows, get yourself a Windows box and remote into it. That makes far more sense than anything else. But am I just being a Mac fanboy? Am I just being an Apple sheep? Which I am. Let me know down in the comments. I think we just need to make sure that we're all thinking of the Mac in the way that the Mac has been built and not in the way that we wish it was built. And at the end of this episode, I want to give a big non-sponsored shout out to a company that I think is pretty awesome. Um, this is not product placement. This is not anything that's been paid for by anyone. I've just bought some stuff from these guys and I think they're awesome. Uh, it's a company called Throwboy. They make awesome Mac stuff, basically. <laughs> like, it's really hard to now define what they did, but they started off as a company that made little pillows um, that were in the shape of the finder icon. They made the finder icon, they made the spinning wheel, they made a few other bits, and now they've kind of expanded. And if you're in the States, you should be buying some Throwboy stuff right now. The only problem I have with it at the minute is that it costs a bomb to get stuff sent to the UK. So my little... Whoop, my little Mac finder icon that you might have seen in the background, this is a sticker from Throwboy um, that arrived. It cost about $6 with shipping, which is actually absolutely fine. But uh, getting a t-shirt costs about $60 because it's about 30 bucks for the t-shirt, 30 bucks for the shipping. But that's just because I made the mistake of being born in the UK and not where Throwboy wanted to ship stuff to. If you're in the States, I definitely recommend you go and check out their site. They've got t-shirts now. They've got loads of cushions. Um, they've got mini little pocket pillows. They've got t-shirts. I've got a t-shirt on the way, as I say, which is the command icon in a rainbow thing. It just looks really cool. And I've had to buy it anyway but go and check them out as well they've also got these massive throw blankets that look amazing um so go and give my boy roberto hoyos some love i remember uh, like d discovering his stuff because i used to watch a show called user friendly on youtube which was Erfan elijah from the cult cast and roberto hoyos and they just sit on that couch and talk about tech stuff and it was cool um and i used to really love their show so bring back user friendly and go and check out Throwboy. I think it's throwboy.com, but I'll throw the link uh, there. And don't forget, we have probably announcements going on today, so if you want to get the latest on it, follow me over on Twitter at uh, iCave underscore Dave, um, or go to iCaveDave.com forward slash Twitter, or forward slash Instagram, or forward slash Facebook, or forward slash Discord to find all of the different socially things that we do. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.